everyone. My name is Tom, and this is the Jayco 264BH. I'm going to do a walk around on the outside, show you how things operate. Then we'll go inside and we'll take a look in there too. So here we go. I'm going to start with propane tanks. So underneath this cover, we have two tanks. They come filled, you know, when you pick up a new trailer from us. So if you were to turn on this bottle and open up this bottle, you have a lever here on your regulator. Doesn't matter where you start, you can pick either side, it makes no difference. So both bottles on, this is the indicator, it's pointed to this bottle. So when you start using propane, it's going to pull from this bottle first. When this bottle's empty, it's going to pull from this bottle over here. Um, you'll never know that. This lever won't move, it'll stay there. The only way you'll know is if you're using your water heater or furnace or stove, the fire is going to go out. So what I recommend is leave one bottle turned off. So we'll pick this bottle, we'll pull from that, this one's off. When this one runs out, you'll know it's out because your fire is going to go out. So yes, you will have to come out here, turn the valve, open up this bottle, but at least you know you're out of propane. When you go into town the next day or two to go to the museum, take that empty bottle with you, have it refilled. Right in front of these bottles, or behind, is you have a 12 volt deep cycle marine battery that has um, lead, it has the lead acid in it and distilled water. Check that a couple times in the summertime because it does get hot enough where that evaporates. So just pick a couple times in the summer. It's got two little plastic caps. You can check those. Um, just real quick, while you are plugged in to your tow vehicle with this cable right here, your car or truck, your truck's battery alternator is charging this battery while you're traveling down the road. As well as when you're at an RV park and plugged in to shore power, there's a battery charger inside that also charges that battery. So you got two ways to keep that charged. It's a pass-through storage compartment right here. There's not there's nothing in there to operate. You see that little, that gold handle there on your left. That is what you use to lower your stabilizer jack right down there. It just slips on, you crank it. When the foot of this jack right there, when that hits the ground, give it about two and a half more turns and that's enough pressure to stabilize it. Those are stabilizer jacks, not leveling jacks. You don't want to try and level it. They will bend. They're not designed for that. Um, you have a sticker here for your tire pressure. Extremely important. If you'll check your tire pressure before every trip, you, you'll have, get good life out of the tires. You will not have a blowout due to excessive heat because of low tire pressure. This is the back of your furnace. Your furnace is gas only. When you're running that furnace, this will get hot. So if you have grandkids, little ones running around, let them be aware that this gets hot. Don't lean up against it. Right here, if you are going to camp off the grid, you do not have access to water, this is a freshwater holding tank. Garden hose in there, fill it up till it overflows. Typically, you want to wait till you get close to your campground before you fill that. You don't want to carry all that extra weight. That's roughly 400 pounds that you don't need to drag down the highway. I would recommend filling it about a quarter of the way full. Carry that with you in case you're an hour between restrooms. You can pull over, get off the highway real easy, walk inside, turn the water pump on, and use the restroom. There's no reason to have to wait to get into town or it's, that's real convenient and a quarter of a tank is not going to weigh that much. You see right here we have a sticker that says low point drain. Underneath here you'll see that white valve and you just put your finger on it, pull it, and go like that. That is draining the water out of your fresh tank. And if that tank is full, 
that can take 30 to 40 minutes. It's a small drain to drain a big tank. You have two more of those valves. I'll show them to you when we get over there. RV park, and you have hookups. Your city water is going to screw in there with, the, with your standard garden hose. That when you're hooked up to there, you have the faucet on, the city water pressure is going to be enough pressure to supply water everywhere in the trailer where there's a water faucet. This is your 30 amp cord. This comes with the trailer. It's about 30 feet long. Um, you might want to bring, get an adapter. It goes from 30 to 15 amps. 15 is what you have at your house. So if you want to plug into your house, that'll keep your battery charged. You can run your lights, keep everything charged up while you're storing it. This is an outside shower. Um, you can clean your feet off, your dogs, whatever you like. Hooked up to city water, this will work. If you are camping off grid, when we go inside, I'm going to show you a water pump switch. Have that on. This will draw water from your fresh tank that I showed you, and you can use that as well. Earlier, a couple of minutes ago, I was telling you that you had three drains. I showed you the one to drain the fresh tank. Right here are two more. Just the same thing. You just open those things up. What this one does drains the water out of your water lines. So you have a cold water line, hot water lines. Open those, drain that out. Drain your fresh tank by opening that valve. When we go to the other side, I'm going to show you how to drain your water heater. So if you drain those four things, then it's winterized. You don't have to use the antifreeze. If you want to, that's another option. But the way I'm showing you right now, you have no water in the trailer, so there's nothing to freeze, nothing extra to buy. And again, that's done right there. Your black tank is the tank that when you use the restroom, that's where everything goes in that black tank. And you also have a gray tank that is your sink and shower water. So typically the way to do this, you put your um, sewer hose, you undo the cap, sewer hose there, other end in the ground, pull your black handle, pull that out first. That drains everything in the black tank. When that's through flowing, and you can look at your sewer hose, at the end of it, there's a clear elbow you'll see that it stops flowing. When that's through, close it, come over here, pull the gray. That's pretty clean water. It's just sink and shower water. That'll come back behind there, rinse out the pipe here, rinse out your hose so it makes it a lot cleaner when you put it away for storage. Push that back in, take your hose off, put it back here in the bumper to store it, put your cap on, of course, before you use that, you're going to pour your chemical in there. You got chemical, you pour chemical, you add water, then you use the restroom. You drain it. Even if you're going to go home, you're not going to camp anymore. You still, after you close that up, you want to go in there and pour your chemical back in that toilet. Now it's ready to go for the next time. Um, one thing real quick, after you dump, after you dump your black tank, Right here, you have a tank flush. Take a different garden hose, not the same one you use for your drinking water, get a separate one. Hook it up here, valve open, turn on the faucet. It's got jets in there that spray all different directions and help keep that black tank clean. The cleaner that thing is, the better it's gonna smell. So keep up with that and you won't have any issues in there. RV parks, a lot of them supply cable and satellite hookups. You do have to bring your own coax cable, hook it up here. Now it's wired to every TV outlet inside the trailer. Another stabilizer jack right there. I was talking to you earlier about your sewer hose. You can push it inside this bumper and store it inside there. 
the clear elbow I was telling you about, that won't fit. You'll have to take it off the hose, put it in a Ziploc bag, and you can stick it up front in the storage area. This comes with a spare tire. This is a full-size spare tire. It's the same tire, same wheel that's on the ground. It's not a donut or anything. It's a regular full-size tire. This is the back of your water heater. This water heater works on propane or electric. And that is decided inside. And I'll show you that when we get in there. I've, was talking about get, draining all the tanks. This little white cap right here, if you pull that off, that'll drain all the water out of the water heater. So you, there's drained out, there's nothing in there to freeze. I would also empty that if this thing's gonna sit for a month or more, especially in the summer, so that water doesn't get stagnant and moldy. Before you take that white cap off, you want to release the pressure from this pressure release valve right here. Just pull on it, let all that water out till it quits, then it's safe to pull that plug. If you forget, that plug's going to shoot out of there, hit you in the stomach and get you soaking wet. Here is Pretty good size storage compartment right there. That's underneath the bunks, which we'll look at when we go inside. This is cable and satellite output right here. So you hook, put the input on the other side that I showed you. Put the other end right there. Here you have your 110 outlets. Inside, there's a mount that will mount to the back of a TV. So you hang your TV here, plug it in there, coax there. You have a power antenna already mounted up on the roof to give you some really good HD free TV channels. It's everything out here. Let's talk about the steps for just a second. These are really good steps. We're very sturdy. So. When you get to your campsite, you back it in there, you get parked, get it level, you come over here, open up the door, this is what you're going to see. So you're going to open the door all the way. I, as a matter of fact, I'd even latch it over here with this latch. And I'll sh you'll see in just a second why this is so important. So now that's open, we know it, it's latched pull the blue lever, pull the steps towards us. Now if you notice right here, this bracket is very close to the door and very close to the screen door. So if you just reach in here and grab this thing and pull it open, it's going to tear up the door, tear up the screen. This bracket's a lot stronger than that. It's going to ruin your trip. So please, open the door all the way, latch it, watch for clearance. Let this down. So we're going to look at the feet, see that they're on the ground. I'm going to put my foot on it, make sure it's on the ground. So that's good. I'm going to unlatch our door and I'm going to watch this area right here. I'm going to make sure this doesn't interfere with the door and just slowly close it and you can feel that there's no resistance. So we're good, ready to enjoy our trip. If there was interference or the feet are not touching the ground, so if there's interference, that means this is too high. So we can push this lever in and retract. You go down a notch or two, then set it back down, of course, do both sides. Or if you need to extend it, pull it out. You can count the slots, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. That's even, we're on some pretty level cement, that's fine. It is not uncommon 
for you to have six here and maybe four here. It just depends on how uneven the ground is. And that's really, that's, that's it. Great set of steps right there. All right, let's do a little walkthrough on the inside here. I'll show you how everything works. This is your monitor where you can check your battery level, you can check your holding tanks, your fresh, your black, your gray, turn on your water heater, gas for electric, water pump. So we outside I showed you your fresh water holding tank and mainly that's for you know camping off the grid. So in order to get water out of there, we'll come over here to water pump, turn that on. Now that pump will work just off of 12 volt battery. You do not have to be plugged in to electricity for that to work. So I'll come over here to fresh. That'll check my fresh water. When I push the button, look up here, you see it lights up. It's got a third of a tank in there. So now I know that I have water in that tank. I can come over here to my faucet and turn it on and get water out of it. So also something you want to do with that, you just get to your campsite, you know later on you're going to take a shower and you want some hot water, so turn on your water pump or if you're at a campsite, you've got your city water hooked up so you'll also have water. But I don't want to turn my water heater on until I'm sure there's water in it. I don't want to burn up the element. So I'll come over here and I'm going to push it to hot, that's on the left turn it on, I see that I have water coming out. So that tells me I do have water in the water heater. So since I'm pl it plugged into electricity, I'm going to turn the water heater on electricity. Water heater, electric. About 30 minutes, you're going to have hot water. Uh, if you have your one, at least one of your propane bottles open, you can also turn it on gas. It will heat it up that much quicker. And then once it heats up, you can just turn the gas back off. If you run it on gas, so you don't have electricity, and you turn this on gas, and it does not light, so right now it's going to light automatically, if your battery is good, if you have propane in the tank. So water heater on gas, there's a fault light up here. So if that red light comes on, that tells you it did not light. Well, why? No propane, <clears throat> didn't open the bottle. Um, so check those one of those two things, that'll be the cure. I know you can't hear it through this audio, but I can hear the water heater fired up so I can hear that it's running off of gas. Plus the light did not come on, so we're in good shape there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off so I don't waste propane. So battery, it says battery right there on this first button. Um, earlier today, earlier at the beginning of this video, I told you this has a battery charger built in, and it does, and we're plugged into electricity. So if I push battery, it should light up all four of these lights. And that, all that's going to tell you is your battery is being charged. If I'll push the button, yes, it lit up all four lights. If all that means is the battery is being charged, that does not mean that the battery is charged. To check that, go outside, unplug it from shore power, you know our cord that we looked at outside earlier. Make sure you're not plugged into your truck. Come in here, press battery, and then whatever state your battery's in, is it empty, is it a third full, is it two thirds? It'll light up that many lights and it'll tell you what kind of condition that battery's in. But remember, in order to see that, you have to unplug it from so it's not being charged. I showed you the fresh tank. We had about a third. Your black tank, it's two-thirds full. Gray tank, that's your sink water and shower water, it's a third full. That's just clear, clean water we put in them so we can show you how this monitor works. And we'll, we always drain all that out for the customer so they're not dragging that extra weight down the road. Um, 110 plug-in right here. These have the blinds that you pull up and down. All there is to that is just grab them, pull them down, push them up. These are really sturdy, so you don't have to worry 
putting them up, driving down the road. It'll it either way is fine. They're not going to tear up. This one right here is another story. This is metal blinds, and you do want to have this up in the air when you're traveling down the road. It is they're metal, and from driving down the road, it'll tear itself up, banging back and forth. So you always want to travel down the road with that thing up. Okay. Microwave up here. This only works when you're plugged into electricity. Operates just like you have at like the one you have at home, but a little bit smaller. Light and a fan above your stove. And then your stove fold this back. I call, this makes a good little backsplash too. On the stove, um, no lighter required. Turn the knob, line, line the flame up with the arrow, and then rotate the igniter. If you look right there, you can see they all spark at the same time. I don't have, I turned the propane off when I was out there earlier, but other than that it would light. Your oven, same way. When I rotate the igniter, your pilot light's in the middle all the way at the back, and you can see it spark. Only thing different on that, when you turn this to light, you do have to hold that knob in to light the pilot light. Then once it lights, just let go, set it to your temperature. Unlike your um, gas ovens at home, when you turn this off, also goes off the pilot light. So every time you go to use your oven, you have to start over and light that pilot light. Refrigerator great refrigerator it is 12 volts only no propane no electricity power button right there got your blue light on that tells you the refrigerator is running this is a little picture of your refrigerator it has the door colored in so if I press that five lights up that's the coldest so if you have your milk in there and you want to turn the temperature so it's not so cold hit that come over here to minus you turn it down to four turn it to three same thing on your freezer you want to adjust it get the light on under your freezer and then you can set your temperature the moon is if you are camping off grid so you're not plugged into any electricity you'll put it in energy saving mode and it's the refrigerator will not cycle on and off as often um, it'll save battery power but great refrigerator really it's you can run it going down the road it's safe you don't have to worry about gas leaks none of that type of stuff right below it this is your fuses and your 110 breakers so you got 12 volt fuses there you want 10 breakers there. So let's say, well, your air conditioner is not working. It's going to work off of electricity only. You'd come over here to look at this to make sure one didn't get tripped. You just pull it all the way back and then back on. That resets it. Let's say your water pump or lights, those are 12 volt. Right next to the fuse, there's a little red LED light that'll light up. And that'll tell you which fuse is burned out. Real, real nice, real convenient, easy to get to. In the, not much in the restroom, it's kind of, it's only one thing really to operate. You have your light switch here on the wall for your light. And then you have on and off buttons for this fan. Just pull down on that handle, twist it. That'll lift the lid on it for the exhaust fan. Your toilet, to flush it, just push down on the foot pedal. That puts water in it, and then open it up. And you want to hold that thing open for a little bit after you flush it. The more water you have in there, the better off you are. And again, don't forget your chemical in there. And that's only at the beginning of your trip, and then empty it when you get ready to go home. Um, 
your two bunks outside I showed you that big storage compartment you can also get to that from in here this is on hinges you can lift that up and get to it and then your air conditioner and heater is operated from this panel so to turn it on press mode that turns the light on then by pressing this you can see it's got the snowflake and cool that's air conditioning then arrow down to lower it arrow up to raise your temperature keep pressing that button that's your furnace button right there you see that says heat and a little waves the same thing on the temperature and that's how you you know whichever you want air or heat just press the mode button till it lights up keep pressing it Did it so you see the little off right down there in the corner then that everything's turned off if you have a we talked about TV outside um, there's a mount you can get mount your TV here coax will go here and outside I mentioned antenna power antenna you turn that antenna on press that button you got your green light on antennas turned on off no antenna if you do hook up to satellite or cable, you need to have this in the off position where it will not let the signal pass through. You won't get any picture on regular TV. And then you've got your AM, FM radio. Um, you have a couple sets of speakers. You have zone one, zone two. Zone one is inside, zone two is outside. And it is possible it is possible to have on both zone one and two at the same time so be careful you don't want to be in here jamming out your favorite music not realizing the outside speakers are on you're gonna have everybody knocking on your door wanting to come join your party but again you can have them on at the same time if you choose to okay moving on um, just let you know real quick this converts into a bed real easy um, the easiest way is to have one person sit down on each side, wiggle the table, lift it up. These two poles will come loose. You can store them underneath the seat. And this will sit on these little pieces right here. You have them at each corner. So this table just sits on the, that lip right there. Take your cushions, push them together, and that's your mattress. This also makes into a bed. Just reach down here in the middle, kind of under the cushion, lift up. And just like that, you have another bed. Same way going back. Lift it up, you'll kind of get in the center, push on it, and it puts back. When you first walk in you have two switches right here so you can just walk in the door reach over hit the second switch that turns on the majority of your interior lights first switch that is your porch light it's an LED strip outside underneath your awning which I'm gonna um, I'm gonna show you that in just a second I got one more thing here important I want to point out to you so this right here that's your that's a propane leak detector so if you have a gas leak you know the stove got left on the pilot lights not on that thing's gonna beep real loud it's gonna sound just like your smoke detector up here so first thing you're gonna do is walk over there to that stove make sure everything's turned off if it if everything is off you've determined you don't have a gas leak but that's still beeping the reason why is that is wired directly to your battery up front that we looked at earlier so when that battery gets low it's going to beep telling you hey i need that battery charged up so i can do my job and let you know that you have a gas leak so 
keep up with that. Don't ignore it. Don't let it just beep. It's telling you that because you know it's it's important. You want to keep that thing in good working condition. Um, let's move on. Let's look at the awning real quick. So right here, as you come in, there's an awning switch. You p just press out. You have to hold your finger on it. That awning comes out. And I think I've got enough room here. I want to show you what it looks like all the way out. There's a little flap at the end that you'll see hang down. And you can stop this anywhere. You don't have to go all the way out. If that's good enough for you, you're fine. I'm not going to have enough room. But you can see where it's getting white. Yeah, there, it, it's hanging down. So right there is all the way extended. Bring it back in, just hit in. Uh, a little tip on the awning. If you're not outside or in here, bring that awning back in. It just takes a quick, hard gust of wind to tear that thing up. So when you get ready to go to bed at night, bring that awning in. You don't know what's gonna happen at night when you're sleeping. And then you can see your, I think you saw your LED light up here. You can still use it with the awning out. You don't have to have it out. Well, let me show you just a couple things here in the bedroom. I showed you that mount on the wall outside. This is the mount that hangs on that. So you would mount this to the back of your TV. You just come over here, that's mounted. And then just push the lever, off it goes. Take this with you to the store when you go to buy a TV. You wanna make sure that this does match up to the TV. It doesn't fit all of them out there. Um, this is an emergency exit window, but you can still use it like a regular window. It's not gonna fall out if you open it like an airplane. So you just hook that in there like that. Get a nice breeze going through here. You have a switch right here. This is for kind of, I call it just a little night light up there, that blue light. And then last, you've got some storage underneath the bed right here for pillows, blankets, extra stuff like that. And uh, silver? Do we need to go over that? Yes, yes. One one last thing I want to show you is the solar panel monitor right here. So you do not this doesn't turn anything on or off. This is just a monitor that tells you what the solar panel is doing to your battery. So right now, um, you know, we're plugged in, so it's being charged, so it's going to give us that reading of 13.7. And to see where it's really at, we'd have to unplug. But you can hit this top button. That'll tell you, you know, it's drawing 0 0.1 amps. Um, that's what it can put out. The, bot, the button below it right here, this is battery type. So right here, it says AGM. So right now it's set up for AGM batteries. Um, AGM, the liquid batteries, the acid batteries like you have up there, they charge at a different rate. So I'm gonna hold this button down because it's not on the right battery and it's blinking. I'm going to push the button. Now it says wet. That's the battery we want. So we're going to leave it sit just like that. You cannot run anything in here off of your solar panel. It doesn't put out enough power for that. The only thing the solar panel does is charge your battery. So if your battery was dead and you pulled it out in the sun, that's not enough power to run lights or a pump. You have to let that solar panel charge your battery and it's like a trickle charger for five or six hours then it'll give her enough power where you can start running lights and things like that 
And that's it. I hope I help you out. If there's anything else we can do for you, don't hesitate to call. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions, be sure to drop a comment below. Or if you have any suggestions on content you'd like to see, we'd love to hear about that. Go ahead and give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again from Vod RV.